Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the rumbling has officially began. Now that we're halfway through this crazy Attack on Titan season, I think this is a good point to stop, sit down, relax, and talk about everything that has happened so far. Because there is a lot, and I mean a lot, to unpack. I was gonna wait until the end of the season to make this video, but I feel like that video would be way too long because we're only six episodes in and there's already too much information for me to talk about in one video, but I'm gonna try my best. But enough of the chit chat, let's hop right into it. So the first thing we see in this brand new season is ironically something that isn't even in the manga. Mappa decided to animate Zeke's butt. They had absolutely no right, no reason, and no point of doing that, but I'm so glad they did because that boy Zeke has one nice plump juicy booty so Zeke if you're seeing this hit my DMs bro I'm single in that first scene we also saw that our boy Levi got turned into burnt toast bro was on the ground darker than fucking charcoal but he wasn't dead Hanji was trying to you know convince everybody that he was a goner she was like oh my god Levi no he, he's a goner somebody pulls up and says let me double check and once Hanji had the slightest bit of pressure on her she jumped into the river with Levi Levi is barely alive right now burned to a crisp there's like a 70% chance that Levi drowns alive before he makes it out of that river with Hanji but it was either that or instant death so I guess Hanji made the right choice so after that, we see that Marley has began their invasion against the island of Paradise, and at this point, it's Eren against the world by himself. He's fighting a whole army, a whole country's army, all alone. Yelena warned him that Eren, let's just, you know, fall back for now. We'll come back once we have reinforcements. Eren says, do you think I'm pussy, bro? Do you think I'm pussy? Do you, do you not know who I am? I am Eren Yeager. Eren motherfucking Yeager. Bro hops down and decides to fight a whole army by himself. Don't even get me started on that walk. That iconic slow walk towards the army. And then he says, Reiner, come down here, boy. Come down here, boy. It's time for part 67 of our fight. So Aaron starts fighting Reiner for the 800th time. Even though Reiner has zero will to live, he just doesn't want Aaron to keep living as well. Every single time we see Reiner, bro is suicidal. But if there's anything stronger than his will to die, it's his will to see Aaron die first. While Aaron and Reiner are fighting for the 950th time, the jaw titan Gilead, I'm pretty sure his name is Gilead, joins the fight again, and he's useless once again. Bro has not done anything important since the last season where he was used as a nutcracker by Aaron. That's the most important thing he's done in the whole show so far. He was a tool for Aaron. That's it. I just want to have a small little break to say, you know, fuck Gabby. There's no reason. I just, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. So I, I just want to take a, a break to emphasize fuck Gabby. All right. <laughs> fuck Gabby. Fuck Gabby. And then we switch scenes to the black dude. I feel so bad for not knowing his name considering he's the only black person in Attack on Titan. And you know, I'm literally black myself. I think his name is like Uyangpo, Uyangkumpo, something like, I feel, <laughs> I feel so stupid. I feel so stupid for not knowing. But he goes to free all the old scouts and ask them for help. And they were like, why are you trying to drag us into this now? Just cause you're getting your ass beat. You didn't need us a couple minutes ago, but all of a sudden, oh guys, we need your help, please. But luckily for the black dude, I feel so bad. I'm gonna call him a young po. Nah, I'm gonna call him the black dude. I'm gonna call him the black dude. But luckily for the black dude, Armin was there and he's over there convincing everybody, including himself, that Eren is a good person. I don't even think that he believes it, but he just doesn't want to see Eren die. So he, he basically tells everyone, come on guys, Eren would never do like he, this is a prank. This is a prank. Come on. Eren's obviously gonna double cross Z because Aaron isn't this type of guy. Guys, he said he wants to euthanize the everyone on the island. You think Aaron is gonna go through with that? Come on, you guys know Aaron, right? You guys know Aaron, right? And everyone's like, uh, yeah, you right, you right, boss, you right, you right. Let's go, let's go. And all while Armin is pleading his case, some dad and like seven kids are in the back like, hey, can we go? You know, there's people outside fighting. And you know, we don't want to die. We're not doing nothing here, so can we just, you know, can we leave, please? Thank you. We also have Misaka going through a midlife crisis at the ripe age of 17 years old. I'm not even sure she's 17, I'm just assuming she's 17. She's going through a midlife crisis at the ripe age of 17 
because Erin said that he doesn't need her. She's just a fuck. She's basically like a robot who was programmed to protect him no matter what. And she's really feeling it right now. She's over there holding his scarf like, fuck, he was right. I do be having headaches. Oh shit, I must be a robot. Come on now. Come on now. Everyone knows that Erin was just talking. But she's, she's over there believing everything he was saying. I mean, they do say love does crazy things to a woman, so... I guess. Back to the battlefield. Eren is still fighting the Jaw Titan and Reiner. I'm not gonna call him Gilead because I don't acknowledge him enough to call him by his name. He's just the Jaw Titan. And that's still a useless name. I would just call him the Thing, but you guys wouldn't know what I'm talking about. So the Jaw Titan. Eren is still fighting Reiner and the Jaw Titan. And then Zeke pulls up. Big ass monkey chucking rocks like he always does. He's on top of the walls just chucking rocks across the whole town. Sniping everybody, all the soldiers and the jaw titan and everybody. This man does not miss. We also got that super iconic Yelena stare down onto Armin. I still do not know why she was staring at him with such malice, but it happened and it was pretty iconic. I want to take a quick little break to say, you know, fuck Gabby again. Just in case you guys didn't get my point last time, it is a uh, fuck Gabby over here. Fuck Gabby. Speaking of Gabby though, she finally did realize that. The people of Paradis are no different from every other person in any other country. They were just turned into the bad guys by the rest of the world because they were different than them. And she starts to realize that. As you all know, Gabby is a parallel to Eren, or basically a mirror of Eren. But I will give her her credit. She is developing much faster than Eren because it took Eren like a few seasons to come to this realization. It took her like, what, one and a half? So I will give her her credit when it's due. But all while she's coming to this conclusion, this guy Falco is over there simping, bro. He's like, Gabby, I love you so much. <laughs> if we survive this, I just, I just wanna marry you, baby. I just wanna marry you. He's over there pleading his case, pleading his love. And Gabby's over there talking about, why the fuck are you telling me this, bro? We're in a fucking battlefield, literally. And then Falco tells them, hey man, the second, the second Zeke screams, I'm a titan. I only have one chance to say my true feelings right now. So I'm saying it now. So I do want to give Falco his props. It takes a big man to, you know, because he wants to get it off his chest before he dies. So, you know, I respect him for that. But still, Gabby, bro. Gabby. Come on, bro. Misaka's right there. Going back to the battlefield once more, the Kart Titan pulls off a 1000 IQ play on the Jaw Titan and the other soldiers of uh, Paradise. Really, really smart play right there by the Jaw Titan. And that leads to them getting a free shot off on the back of Zeke's neck. And now Zeke is laying on the ground, incapacitated and can't move. I just want to take a little break to say that the Jaw Titan at this point of the story, still useless. Still useless. While everybody is on the ground fighting for their lives, Yelena is on the tallest building watching from above, just pretending like she's loose or some shit. She's over there acting like this is her chess game when she's running all the pieces. She's not doing shit, bro. She's not doing shit. L like, little does she know, she's about to get played. And she's over there thinking she's on top of the world and she's running shit. You're not doing nothing, Yelena. Get your ass on the fucking battlefield, you arm and lookalike. And then we have Colt running to Zeke with Gabby and Falco, trying to plead their case, saying, Zeke, please, bro. <laughs> Please, Falco drank some of your wine by accident. Do not scream, please. He said, you can kill everybody here. I do not care. Just do not drag Falco into this. Just let us get away from your blast radius and you can slaughter everybody. We do not care. And Zeke says, ah, oh, it, it, that's tough, bro. That is, that, that, that's a real shame. I'm not gonna lie. Like, that's a, that's a real shame. Ah. Oh. You are my favorite cousin too, Falco. Shit. Anyways. Rah! So yeah, Zeke yelled and turned everybody who drank that wine into a titan, including Falco. And while that was happening, Colt was trying to grab Falco, but you know how when a titan transforms this steam? And because he was right next to him, he basically got turned into burnt toast, just like Levi. And now he's dead. And now that everyone who drank the wine has been turned into titans and they're all under Zeke's control, those titans interfere with the fight between Eren, Reiner, and the Jaw Titan, and Eren's able to break free from them and run to go make contact with Zeke. And this is the, the hardest part of this video. I have to give Gabby her, her, her deserved credit. Faze Gabby is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. She does not miss. She's had two shots. Two shots. 
She's hit them both, man, and she goes for the kill every single time. She patched up our girl Sasha last season, and this season, she was literally able to take off Aaron's head while he was in a full sprint. Do you not know how hard that is to hit a moving target with a sniper of that caliber being a little girl? That takes talent, and she just hit him right. It's not even like she hit like the brain, like a bigger part of the body. She hit him in the neck while he was on the move. Give credit where credit's due, and I'm giving it. Stays Gabby in the building, man. Shit. But Eren is the main character, and Proud Armor does exist. So when she takes his head off, his head magically flies right into Zeke's hand, because Zeke is on the floor and he can't move still. His head magically flies right into Zeke's hand, and they make contact before Eren could actually die. His consciousness was still with him while he made contact with Zeke. I think it takes a few seconds before you foot like you actually die, even when you're decapitated, and... Zeke was able to make contact with Eren before Eren could actually die. And once they finally make contact, that brings us to the coordinate where Zeke is laying on his knees in shackles. Zeke does a 2000 IQ move by telling Eren that only he can control the founding Titan Ymir. He pretends like he's locked up in chains and that Eren has full control and he's like, Eren, tell her to euthanize all the people of Paradise and then our plan is complete. Eren sees that Zeke is all shackled up and in chains and can't do anything. So Eren's like, eh, I'm not, I'm not really fucking with this plan, big bro. I'm not really messing with this plan, big bro. You know, this, this seems like a real good time to double cross you. So that's what I'm gonna do. Adios. He walks towards the founding titan and tells her to give him the power instead of following through with the plan that him and Zeke made. And then he realizes that the founding titan is not listening to him. That's when Zeke gets up and says, "Are you serious, dog? Are you serious? This was just a prank." The shackles come off. This was just a prank, dog. You fell for it. You know, I thought, I thought this was gonna happen, but I thought you were better than this. Honestly, you're, you're my brother. I thought you. You know what? This, this is all Grisha's fault. He brainwashed you, didn't he? He planted those darn seeds of nationalism into your head, and this is why you're like this, Aaron. This is not your fault. Don't worry. This is Grisha's fault. And to prove to you that he really brainwashed you. I'm gonna bring you through his memories and show you the, the terrible human being that your father is. So Zeke touches heads with Eren and then they enter Grisha's memories. So Zeke is taking Eren through Grisha's memories to show to him that Eren wasn't actually supposed to be like this. He was just brainwashed by his evil father. And Eren's like, well, all right, I guess, I guess. So they're going through his memories and the first few memories are just Grisha living life, you know, kissing up and trying to make his way up through the ranks so he can gain more power notoriety and access to places that most people don't have access to and then Aaron tells Zeke that hey, hey Zeke you know what you're right you're right he is a he is a dickhead isn't he 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 turned me into this he's he's a bad guy Zeke he he's a bad guy I was brainwashed you're right big bro let's leave and Zeke is like whoa 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 now nah. whoa now nah. we have all we have all the time in the world because when you're in the when you're in the coordinate you can only be there for a, like a lifetime but to the outside world, it'll be like a second. So they literally have all the time in the world to go through every single one of Grisha's memories. And that's what they do. But I believe that Eren said all that to give Zeke a little warning. Because Eren knows damn well that he was not brainwashed. But he's trying to tell Zeke, hey Zeke, you know what? You're right. We can just end it here. We can leave and you can carry on with your shit. But Zeke doesn't take the warning. And Eren says, okay, if you insist. So in the very next memory, Zeke sees that Grisha actually loved Eren. And in the memory right after that, Zeke sees that Eren wasn't ever manipulated into being like this. He saw that Eren straight up killed two people who tried to hurt him. And Eren told him, if anyone tries to take my freedom, oh, I promise you, I will take theirs first. And what I heard as a viewer is Eren say, if anyone looks at me dirty, I'm killing their whole family, their whole bloodline. And that's when we see the first sign of Zeke making that face. Cause this man is in awe. Eren tells him straight up, I know you were expecting me to be like your weaker little brother, but Zeke, I'm not like this. Me and you are not the same. I'm built different. I'm a menace. So Zeke begins to realize that maybe Eren wasn't brainwashed into being like this, but he still carries on with the memories cause I don't know why. And then shit goes to hell. 
They finally reach the memory where Grisha kills the founding titan and the little kids that are with her. So while they were in the cave, Zeke was wondering why it was taking so long for this massacre to begin. So while we're in the cave, we see the different idealities with Eren and Grisha having one side and Zeke and the founding titan having a different side. So with Zeke and the founding titan, they believe that they should let the world just continue to kill off the people of Paradis. So they're the only one who has to feel pain. If everyone is directing their anger towards them, no one in the rest of the world is fighting. But Grisha and Eren are saying, why do we have to suffer for something our ancestors did and that we have no memory of because the founding titan that's right there erased all their memories so they have no idea why they're suffering and personally i'm siding with Eren and grisha because why are they suffering for no reason and they have no idea why so zeke starts to wonder why this massacre is taking so long to happen because we're in someone's memory we, we can't change anything we can't affect anything we're just witnesses so we finally see Grisa get ready to take on and kill the founding titan and the kids that are with her but then he breaks down starts crying and says i'm a doctor man i can't kill these kids i'm a doctor what, what? and then zeke's in the back like what the fuck is going on right now we are in your memory we can't change anything we're just watching and then possibly the most iconic anime moment of the whole year happens Eren goes to grisha's ear and starts feeding him words of negativity malice and hatred telling him that you started this all right you have to finish it i do not give a fuck if there are kids over there get the fuck up and slaughter everybody here come on bro Tataki. Tatake! Tatake! Yeah, yeah, that was cringe. That was, that was cringe. Zeke's in the back wondering what the fuck is going on right now. Is Eren interfering with somebody's memories? And then they reveal the fact that the Attack Titan can send their memories into the future and the past. So I still don't know how this fully works, but Eren was basically able to send his memories back, I think, and motivate Zeke to stop being a pussy and kill everybody there. And that's what Zeke did. All those words got to him. He got up, stabbed himself in the hand with a scapula, and then slaughtered everybody. Like, he was, oh, it was nasty, nasty shit. After that massacre, Grisha's crawling outside, asking Eren to send him some memories, asking him, was all this worth it? Was me killing the founding titan and all these kids, is it going to protect my family? But Eren doesn't show him anything else. And then somehow Grisha was able to see Zeke standing right in front of him. And Zeke was just as surprised as him. Zeke was like, how can you see me right now? I am in your memory. I'm not real. But then Grisha grabs Zeke, tells him I love him and that he's sorry for everything wrong that he's done to him. But then he tells him that from this moment forward, nothing will go your way. Eren is running the show from now on. And Zeke looks behind them. And guess who's standing there looking like a villain? Eren Yeager. Bro is just in the back with the most menacing face ever and then he just dips. That brings us back to the coordinate and out of Grisha's memories where Eren and Zeke are interacting. Zeke tells Eren that Grisha has notified him that Eren's about to commit the biggest atrocity in human history and Zeke says okay I have to stop this guy Eren right now and then he commands the founding titan to go euthanize all the people of Paradise. Eren is still in the chain so he's struggling for his life so he decides to just rip his hands out of the shackles and if you know shackles they hold you like this. So the only way to get out of shackles is to have no thumbs. So he rips his thumb out of his hands and just his thumbs are basically on the ground and he's running towards the founding titan. And while all that's happening, we get the backstory of the founding titan. She was a regular girl turned slave turned simp because I don't give a fuck what all of y'all say. She's a fucking simp, bro. Her and her town got enslaved by a king from a different region. And while she was one of her slaves, she got in trouble for freeing some pigs. And as a reward for freeing the pigs, the king freed her and then decided to hunt her down two seconds later. And I kid you not, that's how the Founding Titan was created. I'm not even joking. She slipped down a tree bark, fell into a body of water, and some water centipede looking thing touched her spine and she turned into a Titan. I don't know why I was expecting a scientific explanation for turning a regular human into a 30 foot Titan, but this wasn't what I was expecting, but you know what, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take anything at this point, but I, I guess it'll do. But the reason why I called her a simp is because after she got the powers of a titan, she still remained the king's slave. And it's not like she be, she was like treated like royalty or some shit. She was just a regular slave, but instead of living in a barn, she's living in the king's dungeon. The king saw that he had the simp of the year right here with him and decided to abuse her power. Anytime the king wanted to go invade a different kingdom or somebody was trying to invade his kingdom, 
he just had her turn into a titan and they won every single fight in two seconds because regular people cannot compete with a 36 foot giant swinging their hands just taking out armies in two seconds and there was one scene that really encaptures how the king looked at ymir someone was trying to kill the king she jumped in front of him to protect him she was on the ground with a spear in her heart the king looks at her in disgust and says bro get the fuck up you are a titan why are you pretending like a spear can kill you Get up, you're embarrassing me in front of my people. Come on now, get the fuck up. After that, she still remained his slave because, you know, I told you, simp. But finally, finally, the king gave her a reward. And guess what it was? Instead of being a regular slave outside, you can be an inside slave now because I'm going to make you have my children. Yay! Imagine you, you were the simp of the year, the slave of the year, and as a reward, he makes you pregnant. What the fuck is that? And then not only make her pregnant one time, but three times. And all while that was happening, she was still doing slave work, bro. And to make it worse, once she finally had the kids, he made her kids eat part of her body to ensure that they got Titan powers as well. They had people chopping off her limbs to feed it to the kids, man. And she stayed with him. When I call her a simp, I mean it. I mean it. But ironically enough, the name of her three kids are the name of the walls. Oh. While Rose, Cena, and Ennis, I think, Ennis, and, the, and those are the name of all her three kids that she had. That's basically it for the Founding Titan's backstory. We zoom back to the coordinate. Aaron's chasing after the Founding Titan. He grabs her, but Zeke is telling her that nothing you do can change this. I have royal blood, you don't. And she only listens to people with royal blood. But I think that Zeke forgot that Aaron is the main character of this show. So, you know, Aaron just jumped on her, started whispering some shit in her ear, saying, Come on, baby. I know you've been waiting for me for 2,000 years, but I'm here now. I'm here now. And she starts crying and then boom, the rumbling begins. She finally gives her powers up to Eren. We zoom back into the regular world. That aquatic looking centipede thing comes out of Eren's body, grabs his head from Zeke's arm, and then turns Eren into the biggest looking titan I think we've seen so far because that thing was humongous. And once Eren turns into that big titan, he starts the rumbling and when the rumbling begins, every single hardening that is on that island goes down. And what I mean by that is because the walls of the island of Paradise is made by colossal titans that have hardened themselves, the walls come down to reveal that they're colossal titans. So there are no more walls on the whole island and it's just a bunch of colossal titans following Eren to carry out his plan. Eren teleports all the subjects of Ymir to the coordinates to, to reveal his real plan. He tells them that instead of the world coming to kill us, I'm just gonna, you know, flip it around, uno reverse card. I'm gonna go kill all of them. Even though he could just use those titans, those colossal titans, because he has like a million of them. He could just use them as a defensive tool. If anyone tries to invade the island, the second they see two of those titans, they're gonna run away. Imagine seeing like 10,000. Nobody's gonna wanna fuck with you. But Eren says, that's not enough. That is not enough. I have to kill all of them. And now everybody's in a panic because they're like, wow, the whole world's about to die because Eren is Eren. So that was pretty much only episode one to five. Episode six was pretty tame compared to the rest of them. And episode six is just the rest of the people in the city still in awe of that the rumbling has begun. And because there are no more walls in the city, episode six is just everybody on the island still in awe of the fact that the rumbling has begun. And because there are now no more walls in the entire city, the people that Zeke turned into a titan are now going on a rampage trying to kill everybody and everyone just trying to fight back, so. But that's pretty much it. I told you guys there was a lot going on. I made a whole Demon Slayer video on 12 episodes or 11 episodes and it was shorter than this right here. This was only five episodes basically. And look how long this shit is. 